Hey guys, Harry Chum here. Chum as always. Today we're here to look at the good old book, Return to the Pit. I'm going to explain to you guys how this makes more sense than anybody else knows. To establish this, I'm going to be showing some stuff from the fourth closet. We're also going to be going over a pretty special theory today. And this is one for Mr. Einstein himself, the special relativity theory. Just going to give you guys a quick reminder while we're at it about quantum agony. You're going to be able to go check the video after this one. It'll be in the end part. Um, the energy of agony is charged by light and dark photons. They are put into a wave, and whenever they are conducted, like through the animatronics, they are then observed into a particle state when they are able to charge the animatronics and help them work. As photons, that is something that's going to be incredibly important. Photons travel at the speed of light. It is the only speed that photons travel. It is a set speed. Now, whenever we're talking about Einstein's theory of special relativity, what we're talking about is that the closer you get to moving at the speed of light, time is going to dilate and slow down until you reach the speed of light where you do not experience time at all. I'm going to show you guys a little graph today to give you more of a visual on what I'm talking about, right? So we got 0% speed going to 100% speed. It's about 300,000 kilometers an hour. It's a little under. Now, the closer you get to the 100% of being the speed of light, time is going to be different. You're going to experience less time until you're at exactly the speed of light where you won't experience time at all. I'm going to be trying to, I hope I don't get hit copyright for this because like, you know, the rest of the says we can use this stuff to like always teach, it's always good to teach people. I'm going to try to include uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson from Star Labs explaining how a photon does not experience time. There's another view of the world. Remember Einstein, the faster you go, slower time ticks for you? Correct. At the speed of light, time stops. Are you saying photons don't experience time at all? Holy crap. So the instant the photon was created in what we call the photosphere of the sun, the outer surface. Okay. And then it went on its eight minute and 20 second journey to earth. If you're the photon, you are born, born. and you land on someone's buttocks in the, the same, same moment. In the same moment. Oh, snap. So now, as he was saying, Anything that happens through the perspective of a photon is going to be perceived by that energy as instant, right? This is also behind Einstein's time travel paradox, which shows that, yeah, this is true, because if you take two stationary clocks, synchronize them at the exact same time, take one of those clocks, travel around with it at a speed and then bring it back you're going to find that that second clock getting attacked over here you're going to find that that second clock has been lagged behind the clock that stood still because the closer that that time is moving that that object is moving from speed of light its own time is dilating so if it's going like 60 miles per hour its time is dilating more than the clock that's moving at zero miles per hour, who's not experiencing any time there. You're like, Theory Chum, why does this matter? I just put, I put down the wrong book. Let me move my books. We're talking about the perspective of photon. And as we know, as, as we know from quantum agony, agony is made of photon. It's embedded in memories, and it's what you can see. It's shown right here in the fourth closet which isn't really the part I want to show you guys today, but I'm going to show you anyway. 
because I've shown it in previous videos before. Where you go? Okay, yep, yeah, right here. Here. Here we go. Boom. Right. She's able to put the memory. Oh, sorry. She's able to put the memories into Charlie Bot's head because this energy is embedded in memory. Now let's go to the part that I did want to show you. Speaking of perspectives. It's going to be this page right here. Come and do focus. I'm also going to have it on the screen. Let's put it on the screen. And it's Carlton saying, who's that? And they're like, oh, that's our friend. Susie also says it's Bonnie. Now, this is free the fire, which the version of the FNAF 6 fire happens in year two. Uh, so they're not yet released and aware that Afton is the murderer. They're under Afton's influence still. But even then, they see Afton as the yellow rat. So we're getting direct, direct contact that is the MCI's percep uh, perception that's, that is the reason Oswald is seeing the yellow rabbit in here because it's the MCI's agony. Their photons are embedded in that memory. It's also important to know that whenever they sat there, they're like, oh, well, they thought Bonnie was their friend. Yeah, that's whenever Afton was under their influence. But just like the FNAF 6 fire, and as we see with Carlton here, he draws the picture to tell the kids Afton's the bad guy. They see what actually happened. And from that point, that's whenever they're able to see Afton as the villain. He's starting to come out of the yellow rabbit. Now we're going to come back to the Five Nights at Freddy's book, The Return to the Pig. I call it Return to the Photon. In this book, there's a few different routes. And it's what you're what it's told to make you believe it's time travel. While Oswald isn't physically moving his body, the energy of agony is technically traveling time because anything that happens around the pit that would get conducted to it between any point on the timeline is going to happen instantly to any perception inside of the pit. That was a lot of word spaghetti. I totally get it. We're going to go back to the drawing. For this example, I'm going to use the handy dandy Avengers uh, app, right? So we have the MCI in 85. We know that the MCI is part of it. We have Chip. Who happens anywhere, and I'm just going to like rough ball this in 1.5 and three decades later. Chip's energy is also in the pit. That's whose memory we're seeing in the Avengers. Uh, And then we have Oswald and his dad. Zooms in for a time. Now, to the perception of the MCI, who's we're looking through their eyes pretty much, and I don't want to say pretty much, we're looking through, we're not looking through their eyes, we're looking through the way that they saw things in their brain through them. The way that they see things, all of these instances happen simultaneously. Now, whenever we're talking about it, there are key points in the Avengers story that tell us that it is, in fact, not actually Oswald physically time traveling and just the effects of Abby. So again, the MCI sees Afton as the yellow rabbit. This is also an association. In the chip ending, 
in the chip route. We're going to go read it. They're talking about chips leader. And I'm going to be very, very specific with these words because the way it plays out means a lot more than what a lot of people think. Pay attention. What's going on, you whisper to Gabrielle. We're just waiting for the leader. It's all good, she reassures you. Oh, I thought your dad was the leader. She shakes her head. Just as she does, a shadow materializes in the wide open barn doorway. Just a pair of legs, then a torso. So let's stop right here before we go in to get to the reveal of the yellow rabbit. Because just a pair of legs and a torso is just a pair of legs and a torso. It's not until the top part that the head is revealed that the yellow rabbit is seen in costume. That means, right, like, if you were to see someone in shadow and they were coming out slowly, whenever Athens' head came out from behind the shadow, the MCI... Oh, wait, I just leaked it. Yeah, okay, anyways. The MCI immediately perceived the yellow rabbit. So the leader... That's with Chip, right there, is William Athens. Or someone that the kids associate with William Athens, that they would also associate with the yellow rabbit suit, which I don't see anyone be. Now, there is some conflicting evidence with this, such as whenever uh, Chip talks about Mike leaving, and, it, and that being the year after, but being 15 years ago. If we're talking from Chip's memory, his agony from when the rabbit ripped him and oops him in the, uh, by the ball pit, we don't know the exact amount of time that passes. We don't know the exact time that Chip died. But if we were to assume that all of that happened before Chip was killed in this instance, then this would take place around, because if he left the year after and it was 15 years, this would be in about 2001, 2002, that uh, the chip route memory was made. Now, we're going to use this to explain another conflicting part of uh, the Into the Pit saga, the three different ones. And that's going to be the Mega Cats 6 M uh, MCI. So if we remember, Anything that is perceived by the MCI, whether it's actually happening or Oswald's doing, is going to change their memory what they're seeing, right? Just like whenever they showed, just like whenever Afton was shown to be the bad guy with what he did, whenever the kids see something, it influences what they change. Just like in the 8-bit escape ending, at the end, whenever Oswald supposedly prevented the MCI, he didn't actually prevent the MCI. The MCI are perceiving that they saved him because he completed Happiest Day. They're just confused. In the Return to the Pit, a bit escape route, we also get a scene where Oswald gets lined up with the first four kids. Be Oswald with the curly hair, curly crew. Then the yellow rabbit brings in a fifth kid. Let's count this down one, two, three, four, five, six. So now the MCI has witnessed the yellow rabbit. Having six victims. Because that the uh, agony is made of photons, and photons don't experience time, this change becomes instant across any memory that's created or had in the pit, or not created, anything that's trapped inside of the pit. I apologize for my uh, mis. I think what really backs this up is if you look at the Mega Cat game, you got all the kids. They're being lined up. And they're all in the same clothing. 
as if a uniform for this party was determined, or they're being set to tell you that the five of these are connected to one thing. That's why they have all have the same colored pants. Then you have the sixth kid who has completely different clothes. Now, the image I'm about to put on the image that's on screen has been brightened, and it's not the honest image. You, you can't really tell the color of the shade in this image. But this person does have darker clothes than the other victims that fit together. This is Oswald. Really need to fix my camera, but like the it's either that notch. Right. And the reason this is Oswald is because the MCI that have him loot have perceived him as part of it due to the return to the pit. Because of the Avengers route. We know that things can take place even in the future and still be seen in the present time. And this theory of relativity helps explain the loops that are happening. Things are, these memories are looping because that memory is not experiencing time. Time isn't passing for it. So there's no future for that agony to experience. So what do you guys think? Is Einstein's special relativity of time theory taking place here? Or is time just not being experienced by the photon and that is the twist that's causing the perceived time travel? Is the leader of the chip route Afton? I don't, I don't think it's Afton, but I do think it could be someone that children associate with. Just because if this is to be happening like the early 2000s, wouldn't this be the same time that happens already spring lock and behind the wall? Anyways, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. You guys are always loved in the ocean. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. As always, I'll be ready to go through them with you. Make sure that if you like the video, that you hit the like button and you swim your finger on over to the subscribe button. Hope you guys stay in tune. And remember, this May 1st, 2025, we're doing the May Day Strong Planet. I expect to see you guys there. Keep swimming in the ocean.